said. Okay, hope everyone's having fun. Um, chime in if you are. I think it's this has been awesome. Great turnout, by the way. I was excited. Yeah. Uh, to, now we're going to be talking about regex and stir split and which one to use when and why. Um, it's it's you would think it's a simple answer, but you know, as with everything we've talked about, is it depends, and that's kind of what we're going to talk through. Is the well, how do you evaluate, right? So actually, I got to pull. Let me find the pull. Pull regex parse launch okay so let's see uh so the first one's reg what <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i see i'm glad chad's here because uh we've done some crazy stuff with regex uh but yeah and then chad actually showed me some really it's again it just depends what you're doing right and um and your data as well but it's very interesting to see you know what people do uh, what's often amazing amazing to me is i'll find people that work in programming and they don't even know regex is a thing um and i don't understand how that happens but it it does so uh this is awesome so let's get a look here let me find my notes what tom and i saw you there are you gonna um chime in So first off, when you're when you're starting to do this kind of stuff, what does come to mind as far as how do you decide? You know, you have to parse some text. Do, first, does everyone know? It sounds like some people don't know what regex is. It's a string parser, right? You you need you have some text and you're trying to get certain parts of it, either extract it, copy them, <laughs> move them around. I mean, so many things you can do with it. I was just laughing because the Scolada saying that the second hardest thing after learning regular expressions is knowing when to use them. <laughs> and I, I, I will give you kind of like a very simple answer to that. I hope that this answer kind of like makes sense and you have never had the question again. And I actually, uh, we were talking to a client with Joe recently and, and I made the point, look, if your data, the data that you're working with, the text that you get is structured like comma separated values, comma tab separated, tab delimited values. Whatever way, if the text is structured in a very precise way and usually doesn't go out of that, then just use string split or a loop parse because you know what to expect and it's always gonna be the same. When to use regular expressions is when the data is not organized and you have to find a pattern inside that text. The regular expression is just a way for you to express that pattern. That's well, all it is to it. I would add to that though and say the the pattern is complex. It's not super simple. Right. Because um, even if it is very clear in the pattern, you can do some basic stuff. But when, the, when anytime you say, well, sometimes there's this and sometimes, sometimes it's that, not there, you know, then it's it can be really problematic. Now let me let me chime in and kind of like go back to what we said before, you know, about naming the variables with short letters and stuff like that. The reason why everybody says like, oh man, that's a puzzle that is difficult to understand is because in regular expressions, you have to use one letter to describe what you need. So for example, slash D means oh. digits. You can use the pot. Is it who knows how to say it? POSIX. The, the POSIX. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can try that, but sometimes you cannot use the POSIX uh, uh, um, uh, letters for it. But basically, if you use POSIX, it's really simple to understand what is going on. Now, if you are not using POSIX, which most of the people don't use it, if you're using this back backslash d backslash w, you have to understand what they mean, and it's difficult because when you join all of them together with little stars. And little brackets and stuff like that. It is true. It becomes a puzzle. It's just because you're using very, very small variable names that you will have to decipher. And you have very small variable names. You have so many of them in one string that it becomes difficult for you to understand it. That's why. That's the reason why I'm, I don't use short names for variables. Um, now, if it was easier, the POSIX, for example, is just a label that you can use, like, for example, alphanumeric. And the regular expression knows that you're looking for anything that is alphanumeric. Who doesn't oh. understand? Who doesn't understand what that so means? More importantly, you know the person reading it knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you use the word alphanumeric, it is 
way simpler to understand than if I make slash D plus a dot and a star and then slash capital D, which means something else. And, and you know, that's what the problem is at. But with the explanation that I just gave you, it's just a matter of, is the data structure? Don't use regular expression. Is it not structured? Regular expression is probably your only way to do it. <laughs> that's what is gonna happen. Well, there's other things to take into account too, though, right? Yeah. The size of the haystack, right? The size of the thing you're you're picking into. Well, and also, do you take a blended approach, right? Um, and that was where I don't know, Chad, if you remember this. Um, I was doing, I was trying to use regex. I was, I was um, parsing data. I returned back from um, a Knox emulator, and I was trying to get different cars and. The, the regex was really complicated in in like in five seconds you looked at it and go well everyone divided these cars only there's only one that there's only one percent sign so use stir splits first to divide it up and then use regex and i'm like oh my god it was such a simple thing but it it made that crazy regex i was trying to create so much easier um and it was just you know uh, uh, to him obvious to me it was thinking out stop doing what you're doing right and think about what you're doing well another example of that when i first started doing stuff with object already programmed i didn't understand the dom with web scraping i would get all the data from a table and i was writing a crazy regular expression to grab each of the pieces individually um, and then jackie who he's traveling i think he's, he's not here unfortunately but he he showed me he told me about the dom and the, and the table how you can parse it you know programmatically get the the different things iterated over it row by row and column by column and get what you want. So I didn't have to do use a, re use a regex, right? Um, and then the other one, Isaiah, do you remember? Because I remember you and I were working on this. What was it? Oh, it was the U2 API. We were returning back data and we got this crazy amount of JSON data, right? Yeah. And when I had written the code, I was using an object to convert that JSON into an auto hotkey object because to me it was so easy. I don't convert that into an object. I can easily get what I want. But the problem was it was like every call, it was like 13,000 lines or more of text, you know. And, and converting the the, the right. string to an object. And right. at least the 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 well the libraries that we had were very slow, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was only getting one or two pieces of of let's say fifty or a hundred attributes per you know video, and so you were like, well, maybe we should use regex instead. And I'm like, what? Just you know, capture that that section, just that section that you need. <laughs> so basically, what happens is it, it was being returned as a plain string, right? So regular expressions are extremely fast. That is something that you have to understand. It's regular expression as faster than other functions most of the time, unless you do a very bad regular expression. But I just grab from the whole JSON, I just grab a very specific tiny string with a regular expression. And after I had that, then I just shoved it into an object and it was easier and it was faster for the, for the library to go ahead and convert it. So again, um, you use the tools available to you. And sometimes it is just a little bit better to just grab just what I need with this one tool and then use my other tool that I know better to continue my work, you know? So I see that a lot of people, most of the people in the list created simple regular expressions. Brilliant. Right, yeah, it was, it, it is actually interesting. One more thing I'll throw in there was, and actually it might've been that exact example I mentioned earlier was, you 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 had a little hiatus for a while, and I had to go and edit that script. But the regex that you had created was pretty complex, and I was trying to do something. And so it just gets back to also who's going to be maintaining the code, because for some people something might seem very simple, and for other people it's it's over their heads. And you know, I view Roke, uh, regex as more of like a Sudoku that you. <laughs> got to keep practicing and keep trying and, and you're going to bump your head against a wall and get stuck on things but um you know it, it is <laughs> it's crazy crazy fast mm -hmm. uh, we did that one time comparison right where it was parsing a big blob of text and it was below one ten thousandth of a second if i remember right like wasn't that right we had to we had to use the more precise way to measure um how time how much time it took 
Yeah, that is right. And we, we were, as I mentioned, the regular expressions are usually faster. And, 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 and I'm not talking about like a little bit, it's like, like a big difference between uh, different functions. So I usually try, usually rather use regular expressions when possible. Now, somebody made a very interesting question. Brian, would regular expressions could be used for, or could be used for searching common phrases like users say that? Yes, it could be used to, to, to search for anything you want. And especially for things like that, because probably sometimes they put a space, sometimes they don't have that space. Sometimes they say user said, and they don't have the dot. So you can target all of them at once with a very simple regular expression that says, find user said, and the part that says that is optional. I just put a question mark in it. And right away, that regular expression targets both at the same time. So again, for things like that, that is just a, a phrase, it could be anything actually. So long as there is variation on what you're looking for, like sometimes it's gonna say that, sometimes it's not gonna say that, sometimes it's gonna have ellipses, sometimes it's gonna have a coma. If there's variation, regular expression is the, the way to go. Yeah, and, and we're not talking about like sentiment and analysis, right? Where you're actually trying to interpret it and say whether it's a positive statement or a negative, right? It's, this is, you actually, is I, why don't you show a, a short, any sort of an example, just so, because yeah. it's stupid and we don't, it doesn't seem like we have a lot of questions come up. I didn't know, Geek Dude, I didn't know there was actually a Discord server with the Regex channel. Um, so that's awesome to know. Oh, that actually closed it. I didn't want to do that. And to maximize it. So um, there are tools available online, and I think somebody pointed to regular expression one on one, which is the one that I usually use. Um, basically, you put some text here. So uh, let me grab anything. There you go. And I want to capture anything um, that is, for example, Chris. So I want Chris, if I could type, to be captured. It's just as easy as just typing what you want to match. That's it. Now, say, for example, that I want to capture different types of, uh, so Chris with a space, but sometimes Chris will not have a space or something like that. So we have Chris Mallet here, but we could have, you know, Chris. Why don't you use the word and? For... <laughs> oh, never mind. All right, you're just, you're writing it twice. Okay. Oh, but that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't know that I could have multiple cursors in this editor. That's new. So I want to target only the ones that have a space. Then I could have this character, and this is where it becomes confusing because there's a lot of representation to different type of stuff. For example, this is a space, I'm capturing the crease and the space. Now, as soon as I don't have a space, so for example, in Christopher, it is not matched. You see, because it doesn't match what I'm targeting. I could make that space optional by putting a question mark in it. And now you see it matches both at the same time. So Isaiah, I, I wanna, I wanna uh, quash people's fear. There, for the most part, regex is regex is regex. There are different styles of it, but mostly, you know, the backslash S, when you go to different things, it's still going to mean a space. You're not, you weren't trying to say, sometimes it's backslash S, sometimes it's something else, right? Mm -hmm. It's just, there are, you know, things that you use in this that have a meaning, and it isn't always clear what that meaning is. Not only that, the different versions of regular expressions, the only thing that change is basically some features that they add. The, the basics of regular expressions is almost the same in all of them. So whenever you say slash s, it's gonna be the same. Now, some regular expressions allow you to backtrack in a specific way or forward track and those kind of things. Those are features okay. that probably you're not, yeah, you're not probably gonna need them. Well, the, but here's a really, really, really important thing to know. Um, besides, we'll, we'll put up the, the URL for the regex, uh, what's the page, the um, frequently asked, you know yeah uh, okay yeah the as a reference the, yeah, the, the reference the it's it's one of your like the quick questions that always come up like that's always used regex reference quick reference quick reference that's what i'm yeah. thinking yeah thank you 
this is one is bookmark it and you'll use it like crazy. Yeah, whatever they showed here is the most used and probably you will not going to need more than this. So this commonly used symbols and syntax, that's it. That's all. After that, anything you use is going to be advanced. And in, in if you're trying something advanced, you probably are going to need to research anyways. Well, so now, the now, the other thing is, and correct me if I'm wrong here, the auto hockey uses the Perl license, not license. Yeah, the, the per PCR E2. PCR, okay. This is why you want to come here to this Regex 101, and it's the default. Because if yeah. you start using a different one, there are subtle differences, and you'll write it, and then you go to apply it auto hotkey, and it doesn't work. So exactly. just make sure you have you, that. You might need to understand what the differences are yeah. before using it. Now, here, and this is the other thing, this is what I mean by compacting everything. Check this out. I want to match not only crease, but I want to match anything else that comes after it. How do I do that? So how you see how verbose I have to say it. Everything else that ha that comes after it. In regular expressions, you just put a dot and an asterisk, and that means everything else. You see? So I'm just grabbing a concept. I want to match everything else. And making it into a symbol that means that. And the symbol is dot asterisk. Why dot asterisk? Because the dot matches one character. So if I have the letter V and I want to match one character after it, I just put a dot and that is going to grab either VE or VA. You see that? Because it matches any character just once. The asterisk means zero or more times. As soon as you do that, it matches the whole whatever is after that. If I don't put anything in my regular expression, it just matches everything. That's what it does. But I could limit what I'm going to be matching. And again, this is just a quick example of how easy you can translate what you're thinking into some things. Like, for example, um, one of the examples that is very nice in in and out of hotkeys, this so Sunday, Tuesday, right? Uh, Monday, I just jump that one. I don't like Mondays. Um, and Saturday. So this is what I meant. You have text that has something that is recurring. I just found a pattern in it. The pattern is that all of them end in day. What changes is the beginning. I could just match anything that ends in day. So if I start, if I type something that doesn't end in that, let's say my car, it will not be matched because I made a condition. Everything must end in day. You see what I mean? Or I just want to match certain days of the week. Here's another concept. I want to match day. I'm going to add a group of things that I want to match conditionally. And I say Sunday or this bar allows me to do an or Friday. Now notice that my uh, regular expression, which is really simple, allows me to pick two days out of the bunch just because it, all of them match day, but not all of them match either or. So this is kind of like a very quick example of what you can do with regular expressions. It's just trying to find patterns in text that does not contain a clear pattern. And what you're doing with regular expressions is just grabbing a concept and <laughs> reducing it to a symbol. I want to match everything, dot, star. I want to match digits, slash, D. I want to match words that does not contain punctuation slash w and all those concepts become one very small symbol now when you have a lot of those symbols everywhere <laughs> it makes your regular expressions look like you know <laughs> it looks like a nightmare to decipher but as soon as you start doing it over and over again and you understand what each symbol means then it becomes second nature it is just a matter of, pr of practice as many people have mentioned already it's just a matter of doing it over and over again until you go ahead and do whatever you want.
Now, there was a lot of things that um, regular expressions um, are oh. not good at. Yeah, That's I was going to say. You have to keep track on that. <laughs> Dimitri mentioned, hey, if you can use in string, it's faster. So you should use that. It, and I know he said, if you can use it, right? Um, and it just gets back to, hey, that's a big, to me, it is a very big if, right? Because your data you think might be super clean and then until it's not, right? And it's from a guy who I used to work in survey research, right? And you would expect data to be in a certain way. And then it, it gets it gets screwed up, right? Like your patterns, you know, they're not always clean uh, in your text. And so as much as I love, and actually like the, the stuff with using stir split as well, it's amazingly powerful and pretty easy to use, but man, it's, it's, the text is, you know, it's messy is what it boils down to. And user input is messy. <laughs> well, <laughs> never yeah. trust user input. And user input that we, was in a tool where the programmer didn't do a good job restricting what could be entered, right? So. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a it bit is of a lot of things going on at once. So basically, as you can um, understand, um, it might come handy, but let me tell you about situations in which you might not want to use regular expressions. First of all, regular expressions have a high learning curve. Again, it's about symbolizing a lot of uh, ways of thinking. And that makes it that there's a lot of things that you can express in a regular expression, and there's a lot to learn. <laughs> you know what, Isaiah? You know what? Let me let me give you this as a, a way to analogy for it. Yeah. I, I told people I, I learned object oriented programming from reading blog posts and learning web scraping, you know, and it was learning how to scrape different web pages and object oriented coding. And I'm like, I got to tell you, it sucked, right? Why? Because every web page, is created differently by everyone on the planet and they use different approaches or whatever, right? Versus, hey, if I had learned on Excel and Excel is almost always, Excel is Excel is Excel, that com object is very similar, right? Um, it's very easy and simple and clear. And that's where I would say it's like, it's almost when you switch it back to the regex, regex is like a web page. Whoever develops the regex thing that you do, they there are so many different ways they could build the same regex. Right. And and it's it gets to be where you really got to know your crap to, in order to understand what someone did there versus with like a stir split, it's it's usually easier to follow what's going on. That is right. And 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 if you go to the regex 101 page, you can see a library of regular expressions, and you will see that in action. As soon as you enter there, you will find out a few regular expressions that you're not gonna know what the heck <laughs> were they thinking. And there are others that are so clean. So again, this actually ties in back to maintainability, right? What we have been talking about um, in other sections. If you're gonna be creating a script and you're gonna be using regular expressions, you have to be aware that probably if it's not you who is gonna be maintaining the program, the other person might need to know what you're doing because if not, it's gonna be very tricky for them to actually fix it. Wow, actually, um, Geek2 just said Google Sheets doesn't support regex. Oh, it does. It does. Oh, okay. Mm, the one that didn't is Excel. <laughs> well, Excel can, but you have to add it as a library, if I remember right. Right, right exactly. That's what he said. It's, yeah, it's, it's stupid. But Google Sheets look like they do. And then, and then Word, which I've done some crazy search replace with Word. The, the built-in tool is incredibly powerful. But why they just didn't use regex, I guess they wanted to create something that was a little simpler for users, the average user, because I don't understand why they didn't just go with regex. I, I think that's exactly right. Word is for anybody, and that's the reason why it's so popular. Everybody can use Word. Now, as soon as you add these regular expressions and stuff like that, even though you, you, you might want to have both options, like the simple way and just an advanced way to do it, which is what I don't understand why they haven't done that. Probably because of compatibility, they say like, I'm, I'm not gonna deal with the older versions of it, right? I, I cannot add that feature. But in general, um, uh, they didn't want to, at the beginning, probably they didn't want to overwhelm people with regular expressions. Maybe that's 
because regular expressions have existed for a long time since the 60s and 40s they already had uh work regular expressions and they created that but it's not available in word um one other interesting overall concept because it I think we were doing a webinar. I can't remember. And I see Jean still here somewhere. Um, Jean was asking a question. Maybe the webinar was on regex. And he was asking a question of how do I write a regex to basically behave the way stuff does in DOS? You know, a question mark is any one character. An asterisk is multiple, uh, you know, wild character. And he's asking this question. I'm like, because I know Jean knows what he's doing, but I'm like, what in the world? Like, why would you do this? And basically he said, people, you average users understand when I'm looking for a file, what an asterisk means and what a question mark means and what a period means. So he wanted a way to use things that were already familiar to your audience, that right? Because right. it was a GUI interface. And I'm like, that is, once he explained it, I'm like, oh my God, that's brilliant. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Now there are some other some people are mentioning that LibreOffice um, has support for regular expression and binary replace. Mm. Common expressions to look yeah. For. Look at that. So so let me show you how simple it is to do exactly that. What you're asking. Let me do that real quick. Because again, how I think about regular expressions when I'm building them is what part of it changes, what part of it doesn't change, right? So in your case, I know that all of them said, and in said, right? All of them and in that, they all have a space, but sometimes I don't know if that space is going to be there. So I'm going to put the space and a question mark, just in case. But let me just make it with a space, just to make sure that there's always a space. And now there are some things that change. Well, they said, I said, we said. Now, keep in mind, regular expressions are case sensitive. So make sure that you either turn on the case sens insensitivity in the options. In AutoHockey, you can do it by putting the I and a print, open a print. But in here, I could just go ahead and switch the case insensitive flag and now they said gets picked up. I said gets picked up. We said as well, but she said it's not going to get picked up. You see how I, it is not that hard as long as you understand um, the main ideas and how to translate them into a symbol. Because what you're saying is they or I or we a space and the word said. That's what you're thinking about. And I'm just condensing that into a symbol. The or is this little uh, pipe character, and I'm just grouping them with the parentheses. What 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 do you got against women, Isaiah? <laughs> no, because she didn't she didn't want to say anything. What, what is the option, I was gonna say, for changing instead of the case sensitivity to the pronoun, you know, selection? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I think they haven't gotten into that into that thing yet. <laughs> but and Geek, Geek Dude mentioned it was invented in 51 as the first time. Oh, there you go. Stephen He's Cole. very old. He's very old. Yeah. Yeah, what a that's that's crazy, and it hasn't changed th that much. When you look at the other versions, most of them they are almost the same. The, the The core idea of a regular expression hasn't changed since the fifties. Well, it was so good. And now the other thing that I don't think we can show you an example of it, but when we talk about it being fast, it it's really really understating like what they have managed to achieve because it is so fast it's it's impossible to really wrap your brain around with how much text it can search and how fast it, it really is now having said that to, to dimitri's point earlier um simple in string type of thing is even faster right for looking but again that's where you might be looking for something very very simple not only that, if the data that you have has a very specific structure, go with it. This one is divided by new lines. Just go ahead and string split on new lines or loop 
on new lines and make the code that you want to match smaller. That's it. Daryl asked an actually an interesting question. Does do Google, Google search use regex? And I, I know I, you can go to the advanced topic, you know, and no, they don't. lots of possibilities, but right. Mm -hmm. no, but maybe there's a tool out there that actually converts it in some way to That's write a crazy. I'm not really logic. sure. Yeah. Because it's basically just logic, right? Um, or maybe there's another search engine that does. I would say it's not as easy as it might look. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> we might say like oh it's basically logic well if big companies haven't delved, dived into it there might be a reason there is a show real quickly just because i think a lot of people don't realize you can do this show, create an example with stir split and show how you don't have to actually save you can access it directly if you want the third word on a space okay. limited list you can access it directly without saving it as a variable because it's a great tip to realize that like, oh my mercy, you don't even have to save the variables. Um, also in regex, you can create named patterns, which I love using. That yeah. way, the the he showed a little bit of how to capture, you know, but he didn't really walk through it. But the parens give you groups to capture often, not always, but often. And uh, you can give those things names. And so when you refer to them later, it actually has a, na a name that makes sense to you, which is really cool. Now, let me go ahead and this, turn split by new line. Share your screen. Yep, I'm just adding the code. Okay, I'm sorry. I th thought you thought you were. No. That makes sense. So this is what I have right now. I just created a variable that has some text that is delimited by new lines. And instead of saving this into a, this string split into a variable, what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to refer to the third because this returns an object, if I remember correctly. Um, I'm splitting it via new lines and I want to get the third line. And it would automatically do that. So basically, you can refer to one of the uh, options easily without having to first do this. Like most of the time, we're used to just go ahead and having my string and then just saying str string. That's what most of the time we do, which is the most kind of like obvious way of doing it. But sometimes you can just simply, well, not sometimes, you can just simply refer to it in object syntax by referring to the third property in the string that you got. <laughs> so in general, this is a very interesting approach uh, of saving space on variables or, you know, if you just need one, one option with the string split, then this is a very nice way to do it. Well, and also you can use string split, like actually, if you wanted to loop over those lines, I often use a for loop with stir split to yes. just parse it by the lines, right? Or each line in string split. Yeah, that's the, the main idea of string split is that it allows you, it creates an array and the for loop allows you to loop through the array. So then you can use the for loop for going ahead and looping through each. And in this case, this variable, which is called line, would contain the current line that is being looped. Oh, the other thing, which now it's not quite, I think you could mentioned the um, Discord server, but actually I think on, even on here somewhere they have, you can find libraries of already written regex patterns, right? There's tons of them out there. Yeah, so, it's here. Someone earlier asked about converting like an international phone number to an American phone number or something, right? Like, I guarantee you that already exists. Someone's done it. There's no reason to write it by yourself. Here it is. You can have one of those. So, so actually, is this show the regex for matching an email address? Email. <laughs> it is There's one of them. It's simple, but it's so crazy complicated. If you get the one that actually will do everything, it's like this is one that is uh compliant to the, <laughs> to the now he is being smart it it looks like crap but what he's doing is that he's referring to the um to the characters in hexadecimal code so it is language independent that's what he's doing that's why it looks like this awesome but um in other you have a simple one anything you type right with the at symbol anything you type a, a dot and anything you type the problem with that one is that it would match very weird stuff that are not email addresses. 
Well, and right. you have illegal characters, right? right? You can have it, yeah. So, so this one is simple is if you want a simple validation, but you can find different types of stuff. And again, at, at the beginning, it would look daunting, but after you start understanding, look at the at symbol, the W is word characters, many of them. One Here is a, is, a, is, a, is a dot. After the dot, you have some word characters. You can actually translate those symbols into something, into an idea. So, is this, do me a favor, show back in auto hockey just that, that, hey, you can break these across multiple lines in auto hockey. What do you mean? I'm sorry? Your, your badge X, you can actually break it across multiple lines. One regular expression can oh, go yeah, across sure. multiple lines and make it easier. Then you can comment to the right what's going on. Right, of course. So basically, I could just grab one of these guys, put it in a variable. And usually what I do is that I just start with one part, right? And then do a continuation section with the other section. Now let me just do this. So this is one of them. Put a dot. This other section up to this point. And actually, I think all of that is one section here. It ends right here. Then a dot, the at symbol. Oh. And then you will notice that up that to this anchor, point, We should mention the anchor, not that we're doing a whole regex tutorial. No, but that's it. But basically, what I usually do is that I go ahead and uh, delimit everything by different lines. I don't need this one here because that's the idea. Now, and then I just start making comments. Let me make it in, in here. Um, because now I can just go ahead and line this up, make it bigger, and add comments to it in the sense of this is the first part of the email, the second part. And the dot com, for example, you know, and actually that those those have names. Is the local part is what is called here the local part, then the 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 domain, and then the you know top level domain and stuff like that. They have names, but basically the idea is that you can grab um, a, a regular expression, divide it into sections that are manageable for you, add comments to it, and as this is just using a continuation section, they it, it just becomes one big regular expression. But then later on, you can just go ahead and use regex match on it. Um, variable, so my string. And I just use bar as the regular expression. So I just do bar. There you go. Now, um, if something goes wrong and it's not working as I want, then I take a look at the section that I know, well, what is not working is after the at is doing something weird, then I can just, <laughs> tweak that particular section of the regular expression and I don't mess with anything else. So it's a little bit easier for us to go ahead. Now here you see two characters, the correct, the correct character here and the dollar sign at the end. And when you have them like this, they mean the beginning of the string. So at the very beginning of the string and at the very end of the string. I could actually just make something that always matches at the end of the string and not in the middle of it, for example. So again, all those concepts, whenever you're trying to match something, you can do very different stuff. And it, it's just that there are many symbols, but after you get the hang of it, it's really interesting and very uh, powerful. You can do very um, interesting stuff with it. Yeah, and, and earlier you also mentioned, you know, structured data. Um, Auto hockey, we typically work with somewhat structured data, right? And when you're dealing with very unstructured data, that's where I'm talking more in general than just a, a string parsing, but that when you're writing your, your coding program and deciding what you're gonna do, that's where you'll you'll shift into more using like AI to do stuff that because it's just gets to be where it's really complicated. Cool. Anyone else have anything there? Any questions or anything? Did you mention the dollar sign in the the carrot just yes. the anchors yeah not that it matters but yeah um they're, they're crazy powerful i i'm trying to look at our timeline and going did we go over
no, I think we got um, a bit more time on this one. Well, yeah, are we good? Is there anything else? Is yeah, I saw that Ben liked the fact that we were using multi lines with inline comments. Yes, yeah, that is totally well, doable. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what yeah. Joe said. Joe said, like, show that because not everybody knows that. Yeah, it's true. It's not intuitive to just go ahead and do that. Oh, well, actually, that's going to go away, but um, I think it goes away. Does the backslash X22, I think it's the character for a double quote. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Does that does that go away in version two? What do you mean? No, it, it stays there. Okay. So right. the same, yeah. That is a that is the hexadecimal value for it, so it's not going to change. Yeah, that's inside regex, so that's why it wouldn't change. Okay, so yeah, um, that's a that's a good question. So Darius shows is how do you use it for finding ID or ID values in websites source code? So again, what you want to do is in the source code you have to find patterns that repeat themselves. So your ID might be inside one of a section of the website that might contain a type of pattern that you want to target. So depending on how the ID is actually implemented, you can also use a pattern for that. If it is just digits, if it starts always with the letter, if it has a few letters at the beginning and then some digits at the end, there's a lot of ways. The, the main idea is finding the pattern. If you can find the pattern, then you can translate it into a regular expression. That's what is going on. And we humans are really good at spotting patterns. So yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, a <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, actually, actually, all well, the let me real quickly say with what you just said, Isaiah. Yeah. Another really, really critical thing is when you go to test it, don't just look at one one example of your you know the pattern. Like go run it on a couple hundred randomly selected because you'll you'll sometimes get some text. You're like, oh look, here's a clear pattern but you only took a little tiny fraction of the data and then you, you're like, oh, I'm good to go. And when you, you run it in the actual code, <laughs> then you figure out that none of it is what you were expecting. So yeah, that happens. Uh, sorry, Zesh, you were going to say something. No, I was just looking at uh, that somebody was referring to the CJSON, the JSON libraries, the auto hotkey JSON. So um, for even all of those libraries, the one that is the best is the one that is compiled, which is the CJSON. So, so long as the JSON library is compiled, it would have the best speed out of all of them. Now, I don't know if there is a better implementation of JSON compiled somewhere else. I have been searching for one in DLL form. Like I want to have a DLL that is a, a JSON parser so that I could use that if it was actually built in a different language. Um, but I haven't found one that it, that has matched what I'm actually looking for, so. Well, and so actually that's a good topic to bring up overall is AutoHotKey is not a tool written to be supposedly optimized for cranking through millions of lines of things, right? This is why when sometimes we do stumble upon a project where we have to do a lot of data, um, what we'll do is even though we'll still stay within auto hotkey, we'll find other things that are using something at like a C level type thing, right? Where yeah. someone has optimized it in another language or even regex is a perfect example too, right? Right. That's when we'll use those. We, we still, you can make your GUI with auto hotkey, but do your hard number crunching or whatever you want to call it in the other languages, you know, but from an API, you're programmatically just driving with those. Yep. That is right. Now, uh, yeah, that is, uh, Geek Dude is mentioning that CJSON is outputting an out of hotkey object, which is great, which is exactly what we were looking for. But I, I don't know if you already compiled the CJSON library for version two. I think for version two, somebody else is doing some translations of your um, library. But again, they still have some, some little details that I'm, I, don't, I didn't use them that often right now. But um yeah yeah i i heard about that one too but i haven't i tested it i didn't really uh liked it so in the end i stayed with that now uh regular expressions um are built into auto hotkey okay so 
this is one of the other things for JSON um, queries and stuff like that in and other libraries like XPath and stuff like that. You have to either connect to a com object or use a library, an external library. Regular expressions are built in to AutoHotKey, so you have functions that already perform that, and they are already optimized. So basically, that's the the fastest speed that you can get in an AutoHotKey script. You're going to get it with one of those uh, using regular so regex match or regular expression replace. Which, which by the way, and it's a really good point, is as in. It's one of the things I love about AutoHotKey, right? Is part of it, of course, is because it's connecting to Windows and using the Windows API in one way or another to do so much of the stuff it does, which is why it's so lightweight and has so much functionality. But earlier, someone mentioned Excel doesn't have regex built in, but you can add it. Well, this is the really cool thing with AutoHotKey. You can programmatically with COM work on your Excel file and use regex from AutoHotKey, you know, on text in Excel. So you don't have to go add the Excel library for having regex. You can use the AutoHotKey's regex stuff on it, right? Which is just really cool. Exactly. Does anyone have any other questions, anything they want to work on before we get to the next topic? <laughs> Alan. Yeah, is Tom, I think Tom's still on, right? Um, mm -hmm. we, we have a tool where with, uh, one of our clients here, Tom is a uh, Thomas, and uh, he's doing some really cool stuff in Word um, where we're hyperlinking text. But the tricky part was, hey, what if we wanted to try to keep the format of the stuff? You know, when you go through and we're searching for things and replacing it with a hyperlink if it's a certain word, and you know, it it's it took it us a little bit of thinking, but we realized we can we can do it. You can copy the format first before applying the link and then going ahead after you apply the link, kind of like redo the, the formatting. <laughs> but I think you <laughs> a different Tom, Tom. Mm -hmm. It's a different Tom. <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I mean. Uh, and then uh Ali yes. asked about reading and writing Excel files without having Excel. Excel. Stuff. Right. So, I don't think. Well, here's the thing, right? The, the, uh, I'm blanking on the Excel extension. Um, X, I know it's XLS and then it's X, X, XLS X. Yeah. Thank you. Right. The, those, any office program, right? Like those, those are all, um, zip files that have XML files inside them. Right. So you could, Un, yeah, there's zip files, so you can unzip them, and then you can open them as XML files and manipulate them. The trick is, it's going to be a crap load of work to kind of understand where things are and how they're stored, right? But yeah, you can do that. We actually wrote some stuff for um, working on Excel without having it open. It's it's not though to go actually edit. It's uh, it's like setting properties. I don't want to explain what it is, but it's um, you know, manipulating the file without having the in content of the file. Uh, but there's also an object you can grab the properties of the Excel file, um, and you don't have to have it. I don't think it uses the Excel com object if I remember right. But yeah, that is right. <laughs> is it Tation? Is the um, you could you could use that. Yeah. Well. It, it reads XML files, right? Yeah. Well, it, yeah, but does it read Excel files? No, no, but you unzip it and then use the okay. other ADVO connection to right. actually go ahead and yeah. read the information and do SQL queries on it. Yeah. So for those that don't know, um, ADO is built into like every Windows computer from whenever, at least XP. Mm -hmm. And so you have access to a tool on your computer without getting the SQLite database without doing anything else to open files and run SQL queries on them to join files. It's amazingly powerful. What I don't think you can do, and we tried looking into it, I don't think you can save as a database with or the- create, create a, a new database, like from scratch. You have to actually have, well, connect to an existing one. I'd still say that create one, I mean, you can create tables, Right, so you can open files, create tables, join things. 
you just can't save it as a database, which still, however you want to phrase it, right? It's, it is. Yeah, but, but, well, that's true. Right. I mean, it, so whatever you want to call, what is it when you have all those tables that you're running SQL on? You're, mm -hmm. you're, I think you're implying that's not a database. Like, it's a data structure, right? right. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically, just, it, it, the, the ADB, ADODB connection, you must specify what type of structure you're looking at. If it is a CSV, if it is a, a SQL database, or if it is something else, it cannot create one from scratch. So it cannot compile a, a SQL database for you if you didn't have it already. What I'm curious about now is if I could use file append to create a new file with some columns in it, some are, uh, tap the limited columns, and now I connect with the other DB and just insert information in it. So basically, I would assume that I could do that. So I could just use file append, create a, a basic uh, CSV file, and then just append to it. Well, which I think you can, but it's not stored as a data, quote unquote, database. No, it's not. Yeah, it's a plain text in this yeah. case. So every time you go to use it, you have to read in, if, let's say you have multiple tables, right? You'd have mm -hmm. different CSV files. You'd have to read in, join them, do whatever, which still, I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying like this. Or this is what I thought. Could we create a blank database file and then figure out how to write that with mm -hmm. auto hotkey as an object as a blank fi database file and then use that to, you know, to fill it? Yeah. Is there anything else? Anyone else want to mention any other um, text parsing approaches and what they like to do? Uh, does anyone still use the, I think Guy mentioned, I don't, I think he said in string, whatever, but there's, there's some crazy ones, which correct me if I'm wrong, is this, those go away in version two, right? The, in version one, there's some really interesting contains, I think, and a couple other ones that are like that, right? Those. Yes. I got to guess those aren't in version like two. Like if, if, if is and, you know, the, the not, well, not those that I mentioned are still there, but the contains is it like in, so for variable in, so let me, let me share real quick. So if you have, you had this for if var in one comma two comma three, this, you could do this in version one. And remember what happened was that this is a string of text, right? This is not a string of text. This is actually part of the if, is it? And this is also not a string because you're referencing the variable without the percent signs. You see what I mean? So it, it, it is a mix between expression and string of text, which is extremely confusing and leads to error. Now in AutoHockey version two, everything is an expression, so you cannot do this anymore. And they totally removed the in thing because they said, dude, you have in string. Right. It's the same, var, and then you just put- but what, what about contains? Is there a way to do contains? It's the same. That's what, that would be a contains. If yeah, the variable contains the, the word one. Can you look for multiple things at one time? No, that's when I would use a regular expression, which what I would do is if var, and this is what the contains looks like. Well, this is a shorthand for a regular expression. And so what I do is that I just jump straight into regular expression one or two. So now I'm just using the regular expression to search for two things at the same time inside my variable, which would be the same as having two different, like if and, and or. So these two statements do exactly the same. This one is short. <laughs> so, so basically, yeah. Brian asked an interesting question of, you know, what about looking for words you may not know that you're putting together a lot, so things that you'd want to turn into a hot string. Um, and that's where I was like, you know, especially when it's more than one, that would be problematic. But um, I, I would I would consider creating a key logger to just look at all of what you type over time and then somehow trying to look at that in, in 
go through and see what are the frequent what is what is frequent yes exactly i see yes you forgot the i option all right so yeah the i here just to make it uh case insensitive right <laughs> yes yeah because later on if, if if i have something that is an o or you know what two then it would not match because as yeah. i mentioned before regular expressions are case sensitive so for disabling that you have to put the i uh, option with the with an open parent parent before doing the regular expression awesome let's uh let's go ahead and let me stop recording and we'll jump into our next one which uh i think is ides which should be loads of fun stop recording